Ladies and gentlemen of the Shred Gaming Silicon Video, Windows 10 will of course bring along DirectX 12, which many are excited about, including myself. But Vulkan might actually have more potential. So, the developers behind Magicka 2, Pieces Interactive, have recently had a short interview, and during which they've said, and I quote, DirectX 12 is a big improvement over DX11, enables games to move to the next generation of graphics, but we're also eagerly awaiting the official release of OpenGL Vulkan, which might be even better than DirectX 12. Currently, we are only experimenting with the APIs, but we of course support them eventually. And they also said the Paradox are focusing on PC for many years, and this is the first Paradox game for the new generation of consoles, so we start slow and begin with just the PlayStation 4. We will see if and when an Xbox One version will be possible, and currently we do have an exclusive deal with Sony. I do find the comments rather interesting, however, with Vulcan, and we've actually put together a text simplified which was recorded a couple of days ago. Um, I've actually had to get uh, a martyr to record it simply because of recording schedules and so on. I was sick at the time, but it's all done rather nicely and we're going to be editing it over the next couple of days. It's going to be pretty sweet. I wrote all the script and so on, so we're going to be explaining it just like we did the DirectX 12 video. But in terms of performance, of course, we don't have all of the information on DX12 versus Vulkan and there is a lot of information regarding DirectX 12, but from a very real point of view, a very basic point of view, in some ways Vulkan has a small advantage in that in terms of an ecosystem it will work over a larger variety of hardware, so if you're developing for let's say a Linux PC or a Windows PC, you're good. Theoretically it could also work even for the PlayStation 4. Um, Vulcan is an evolution at, a at its heart of Mantle, and Mantle, of course, does have many of the features of DirectX 12, low-level API, so you've got low overhead for the drivers, um, rendering threads will, of course, spread over multiple CPUs, and so on and so forth, and it, of course, it does feature um, next-generation support for compute, and all of the other bits and bobs that we've discussed. Mantle however, with the evolution into Vulkan, is rather interesting um, because it has a lot of industry support. Not only is it cross-platform, but you're getting a hell of a lot of developers um, who are putting a lot of time and effort into it. And that's not to say that this is not the case for DirectX 12. Don't get me wrong. Obviously, you had uh, the folks over at Unity go on stage and say, hey, this is what we managed to do with uh, multi-threading shadows and all of this stuff. But... There is something to be said with the more open nature of Vulkan, and we've had everyone from Samsung and Apple, AMD of course, naturally since they basically gave away a lot of their source code with Mantle, NVIDIA, um, Intel, you've got all of these large companies, Epic, and we all know what Epic, you know, their contributions to the game industry alone with their Unreal Engine, I mean, how many games use Unreal Engine? You've even got Blizzard who are starting to contribute. So it's it's a very interesting situation. And I'm not trying to take anything away from Microsoft here. This isn't me saying go away DirectX 12 or me to say, you know, your efforts are in vain. Vulcan is going to take over. But I think it's good if there's a competing API. There's a couple of reasons behind that. The first one is that it means that theoretically we're going to get DirectX 12, 12.1 and other feature sets and it's going to continue. DirectX 11, um, obviously you know there were iterations of DirectX 11 but to be totally honest with you they were really slow and DirectX 11 has been around for ages now. We just, we needed something else and you know while Microsoft have improved multi-thread rendering over DirectX 9 to 10 and now of course 11 Multi-thread rendering just quite simply sucks on those older APIs. So I think that's a good thing. The other reason it's good is because it promotes game development across more platforms. Vulkan isn't just for the PC or for, let's potentially say, the PlayStation 4. It also will work across mobile and it will also help to integrate and solidify and to... Um, Unify, I guess, that's a lot of uh, FIs, 
but still, with web development, open, uh, WebGL, and all of these other technologies and compute, all of them can be start to be brought in together and brought into the next generation. Remember, a lot of this code does date back 20 odd years, 22 years if memory serves. That's not to say that the code hasn't evolved, but it's like, you know, there is always going to be some old code left, and it's really just throwing away this code and just starting up from the ground up and building. And it's possible that this, if if the APIs do at a core have a lot of similarities and they work very well together, it might help a renaissance in terms, well, I say renaissance, it's completely not the wrong word, a resurgence or a surge of um, Linux. And I'm not saying that I'm a massive open source advocate. I'll admit I primarily use Windows. 90% of my time on a system is Windows. Um, just because even when I'm dealing with web servers, primarily Windows. That's not because I hate Linux or anything like that. It's just with the applications that I've been running for work when I was a system admin, when I was doing bits and bobs, 95% of the applications they needed a Windows base that we were running. It just was how it was. You know, we were on Exchange or the applications that I was, um, you know, in charge of maintaining, they required Windows using uh, IIS and other bits and bobs. But, you know, I like I like Linux. I think it's kind of cool. I like doing the command line stuff, even though I suck at it because I haven't really used it in the last couple of years. And you know what it's like when you've not used it in a while. But still. And I think that overall, Linux has a lot of potential. Don't forget, you've also got Valve. Val Valve, of course, have thrown their hat into the, into the Linux arena. And we all know that Source Engine 2 is going to be a thing. I don't know much about Source Engine 2, neither does many other people. But I'm very curious to see how powerful it is. Um, and of course, it will indeed have a native Linux version. And we can assume a native Vulkan version. The reason we assume that is because, once again, Valve are throwing their hat into the arena. I'm not saying that Microsoft are the devil. I actually really like Microsoft. I really like their ecosystem. But I don't think it's good for the industry to be contingent, to rely, to hinge upon just one company to move it forward. I don't think that's ever a good idea. It's the same reason that I've always said that I like the idea of NVIDIA and AMD both being really competitive or AMD and Intel both being really competitive. It's another reason that I'm really hoping that the Zen platform is really competitive to Intel. I'm not saying that I want a situation where, you know, for six years AMD are ahead of Intel or anything like that. I because, you know, this happened back when the Pentium 4 came out, they just were not competitive to, uh, to AMD, and it was a bad situation because, you know, at the end of the day, you, you can grow complacent. I don't think that's good. I think, you know, competition is really good for the industry. It pushes down prices. It's good for the consumer. It means that, you know, software development companies aren't basically forced to do deals. Uh, Gameworks, for example, and I'm not saying I have anything against the video, I actually quite like the company, I think they've done a lot of good stuff, but it's just how it is, you know, game works, a lot of developers, and even if you ignore AMD's comments, if you actually look at a lot of developers, you know, they don't like it because of the closed nature, and obviously we are getting slightly off topic here, but I'm just saying for the greater development and the greater good of the tech industry, I think having multiple APIs, multiple well-performing APIs that not don't necessarily mirror one another so i'm not saying that they do exactly the same but maybe one has slightly better performance in one area maybe one has slightly more robust compute performance or maybe the other one has slightly better rendering performance or maybe the other one's slightly better at dealing with certain types of shadows or lighting or it doesn't matter you get the idea anyway hopefully you've enjoyed the video this turned out to be about twice as long as i anticipated but still it's a communication from me to you it's fun or something. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Do the likey, commenty thing, sharey thing, you know, that normal YouTube begging thing, and it would be mighty appreciated. Anyway, take care. Bye for now.